Hey, Mike from Prep Pros here, and today we're going to cover 10 things you need to know for your October SAT. We're mostly going to be focusing on the second harder reading and writing and math modules where most students have been getting stumped or really struggling on test day. And at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about some of the resources that I've been using with students that help them absolutely crush the August SAT. We had two of our students in our courses get perfect 1600s on the August SAT, over 20 students score 1550 plus, and some others make some truly spectacular gains over the summer. Now, the first thing that you're definitely going to see on your digital SAT and actually are far easier than they generally look once we learn the rules are discriminant questions. These show up on pretty much every single blue book test. And from students taking the digital SAT, pretty much every single one sees at least one of these questions. Now, the way you're going to be able to spot you're dealing with a discriminant question is you're going to see a quadratic and it's going to talk about the number or type of solutions. Now, we can get some sneakier advanced varieties as well. Here, when we see the given equation, ax squared plus 98x plus c has at least one real root, well, roots are synonymous with solutions, so that tells me it's a discriminant question and a factor of kx plus j. This part, we don't really need to worry about. What is the greatest possible value of ac? Well, now, since we're saying at least one real root, that means we could have one or two roots or one or two solutions. That means we kind of want to combine these two conditions together to help us solve through. So this would give us b squared minus 4ac would be greater than or equal to zero. That's going to help us solve for all these possible conditions if we're not sure of what we're looking for off the start. Now from here, our a value is a, our b is 98, and our c is c. So we're simply going to set this up as 98 squared minus 4ac is greater than or equal to zero. Now when we do our 98 squared, we're going to get 9,604 minus our 4ac is greater than or equal to zero. This is going to give us that 9,604 is greater than or equal to 4ac. Now we can just divide everything by 4. And when we do so, we'll get 2,401 is greater than or equal to ac. We could also think of this as ac is less than or equal to 2,401. So if we're looking for the greatest possible value of ac, that's going to be when it's equal to the 2,401. And so that's going to give us our correct answer of 2,401 here. Now, the next concept you're going to see on your digital SAT are what I like to call advanced unit conversion questions. So these are going to involve squared or cubed units. So we need to square or cube our conversion factor. And this is the place that most students struggle. So we're going to break this one down together. But of course, as always, see if you can work through on your own. A rocket speed is increasing at a rate of 14.6 meters per second squared. What is the rate in miles per minute squared? Now, one thing we want to kind of remember is if you see the word per in math, this is code word for divide. So what we can do is we can set this up as 14.6, I'm just going to write meters over one second squared. And now we want to get this into miles per minute squared. So the first thing that I would just do here is I would take care of our meters to miles conversion. So this means we're going to have our 1,609 meters, and we're going to have our one mile on the numerator. Now, you can always remember you're setting up your unit conversion properly if you're able to cross cancel your units. So now we're in miles per second squared, and we need to get to miles per minute squared. So the next step that we have to take is what we know is there's 60 seconds in one minute. Now we know we should put the seconds on the top once again because we need to cancel out the units. But hold up, we have a second squared on the denominator. This means I need to square this entire conversion factor. So this is going to become 3,600 seconds squared over one minute squared. But once we have this set up, we're simply punching this into our calculator and then we'll get our correct answer of 32.67. Now, the next thing you're going to see on your digital SAT are tricky percent questions. And one of the most common varieties is increases and decreases, because a lot of students really conceptually struggle with this. They'll often confidently miss the question. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure out the right answer. Now, if you picked 900, this means you would have fallen for the SAT's trap here. Now, the reason most students get 900 is they end up simply doing 81 divided by 9, and that's equal to 9. They multiply this by 100 to put it in percent form and therefore they get 900. But what we need to understand with percent increases or decreases is we're always doing one plus or minus the percent expressed in decimal form. So if we're saying 81 is X percent greater than nine, 
what we're really saying is 9 times 1 plus x, our percent increase, is equal to 81. Now as we do this, we'll get 9 plus 9x is equal to 81. We'll get that 9x is equal to 72. And we'll get that x is equal to 8. And then since we want to put it in percent form, we're going to have to multiply this 8 by 100. And that will give us our correct answer of 800%. If you see increases or decreases, make sure you're incorporating that one plus or minus. Now, the next thing that you're gonna see on your digital SAT is interpreting constants in exponential functions. There's a handful of varieties of these, all of which are covered in our advanced math course, but we're gonna go over one here which really stumps a lot of students. So here we see for the function f, for every increase of one half in the value of x, the value of f of x or y increases by a factor of c. This means it gets multiplied by c, where c is a constant. Which of the following forms of function f displays the value of c is the base or coefficient? So we need to make sure we're understanding what the SAT is asking us, and this is the part that confuses most students. So we're going to unpack this last sentence. Which of the following forms of function f displays the value of c is a base or coefficient? Well, since we're saying it's increasing by a factor, that's what it's getting multiplied by, we're saying once we understand what c is, it has to be shown by the portion in the parentheses. Now, for it to already be shown by the portion in the parentheses, that means this needs to end up being raised to the first power when we plug in 1 half for x. And once we can connect those dots, it's relatively easy to see that b is correct because we would get f of x equals 56 times 8 to the 2 times 1 half. Well, that would be the same as 2 times 1 half is 1, so 8 to the first is going to be 1, that's going to show us when x is 1 half, we're already seeing the amount that we're increasing by. Now, one sneaky thing that helps this click with students sometimes is these are actually all equivalent functions. If we plugged 1 in for x in a, we'd get 2 to the third. Well, that would be 8. 1 half in for x, excuse me, that would be 8. One, 64 to the 1 half power is going to be 8. 4096 to the one quarter power is also going to be eight, but we just need to pick the one where it's already being shown to us, which in this case means we just need to raise it to the first power. Now, the next concept that we're going to cover is actually one of the easiest places to improve your math score on the digital SAT because it's far easier than most math. The reason that most students struggle with it is very simply, they've never actually taken statistics or AP statistics. So this is statistics related questions. And the one in particular that even really strong math students that I work with often miss is understanding the relationship between sample size and margin of error. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure out the answer to the question here. Now, the relationship we need to understand is, is sample size increases, margin of error decreases. Is sample size decreases, margin of error increases. Really, really simple. So when the study was repeated with a much smaller sample size and everything else is calculated in the same way, sample size decreases, margin of error increases, that's going to let us see that A is our correct answer. Now, the next thing you're going to see on your digital SAT are what I like to call tricky transitions. Now, these are tricky because they involve your understanding of how to properly join clauses together, along with your contextual understanding of where the relationship the transition is in the passage. Now, to make our life easy and make this process simpler, first thing I want you to always do if you see one of these is cover up the transition and the punctuation and check the clauses before and after. If you're not familiar with clauses, we'll go over these a little bit more at the end of the video and make sure you feel comfortable with them before your test. So we're going to read from the Maginot lines all the way up to circumventable. The Maginot lines constructed ending at the beginning of the Belgian border left the line circumventable. Well, that's an independent clause, full sentence. Now we'll read the part after. The line's effectiveness was hampered as it was constructed to defend against the methods used during World War I, but could not adapt to those applied in World War II. Well, this is another independent clause. So we need period, semicolon, comma fanboys. Sometimes we can even use a colon or a single dash, but only if the part following is giving explanation, definition, clarification about what we talked about. This part is not giving that explanation, definition, clarification about being circumventable. So we can get rid of A and we can get rid of B because those don't work with our basic grammatical rules. Now from here, it becomes a context understanding. And the one I want you to always start with is answer choices that look like C. What this is essentially saying is the transition is working back to the left. It's showing the relationship between sentence one and sentence two. 
D here is showing that there is a contrast between sentence two and sentence three. So this is where we just need to read the context of the passage. The Maginot line, and I will always start with this answer choice C because it's more often than not correct. The Maginot line built after World War I was constructed to protect France against German invasion with fortifications and armed defensive positions. This essentially means we should be okay to pop the transition right at the front of this because it's showing that contrast between sentence one and sentence two. However, the Maginot's line construction ending the beginning of the Belgian border left the line circumventable. So it was supposed to be really good and able to protect France, but it was able to be circumvented. So here we are showing a contrast. That's how we can see that C is correct. There is not a contrast between sentence two and sentence three. Sentence two says it was circumventable. People could get around it. And then we talk about other things that are hampering, reducing the effectiveness of it. So this would be like a furthermore or something if we're gonna use a transition there. That's how we can see that C is correct. Now, one of the next concepts you can see on your digital SAT, which is gonna range from medium hard to super, super hard questions are scale factor questions. Now, if you memorize this table for my book, it should be pretty easy for you to work through these. This is the relationship between scale factor and perimeter multiples for similar shapes area multiples, surface area, and volume. And all you have to remember is we're just gonna kind of use two here to start. Perimeter is gonna be your scale factor times greater. Area is gonna be your scale factor squared, same with surface area. Easy way you can remember this is your units for area and surface area are in squared units. So you have to square, square your scale factor. And volume is gonna be in cubic units. Now, sometimes we'll have to go backwards. So here, if we see there are two similar rectangles, the area of a larger rectangle is nine times the area of the smaller rectangle. Well, if we know our area multiples, we would take the square root of that to work our way back to the scale factor. So what this really tells us is the side lengths when the area is nine times greater are actually three times greater. Therefore, if the perimeter of the smaller is 44, the perimeter of the larger is gonna be 44 times three or 132. Now, one of the next things you're definitely gonna see on your digital SAT are questions that can be done in Desmos very easily if you know some really important tricks. And most of these revolve around understanding how to use the table and the regression tool. So here we see the function f is defined by f of x equals a to the x plus b, where a and b are constants. In the xy plane, the graph of y equals f of x has an x-intercept at three comma zero and a y-intercept at zero comma negative 342. What is the value of a plus b? Well, first thing we're just gonna do is enter, simply enter into the table those two points. We have the point three comma zero, and we have the point zero comma negative 342. Now, the function is defined in this form of f of x equals a to the x plus b. But if we put it in this way, Desmos isn't gonna solve. We also wanna remember f of x is the same as y, but it's not gonna be able to do anything because the table is in terms of x1 and y1. We're gonna have to rewrite our x's and y's in terms of that. So we'll do y1 and x1. But when we do this, it's still not gonna solve for a and b. We need to simply use this little tilde button and then it's gonna solve for a and b. And if we're looking for a plus b here, you can actually simply just type in a plus b and it's gonna spit out your correct answer. Now, before we get into our final topic of the video, make sure you stick around for the end because I'm gonna talk about some recommendations for different groups of students, whether you're just struggling on the second harder math module or you're cramming, you didn't have as much time to study for the SAT as you'd like, and stuff which can quickly help you improve your score. But our final topic here is gonna be one of the most commonly tested topics on these conventions of standard English. And it's one that we can absolutely make sure you master before test day. And this is gonna be sentence structure rules. So this is gonna be making sure we understand how to spot independent and dependent clauses, and we know the rules around connecting these. These are taught super in depth in my free trial, so I'm gonna go a little bit quicker here. But if you're not familiar with this, make sure you check that out. You don't need a credit card. It's truly completely free. And you'll also get to check out a chapter of our math course and some of our advanced math course as well if you want more practice with really challenging questions like we've gone through in this video. So first thing we just wanna do here is we always wanna check our clauses before and after this breaking point. Sigmund Freud's psychoanalytic theory developed in the late 19th century provided groundbreaking insights into the unconscious mind and human behavior. Well, that's independent clause, full sentence. It neglected the influences of societal factors and cultural differences on psychological development. That's also an independent clause. Now, if this it threw you off, make sure you check out the free trial because we're gonna go over a trick which is gonna help you avoid not properly hearing that as being able to stand on its own. 
But here, since we have two independent clauses, this means we need period, semicolon, comma, fanboys. Only C gives us one of those options, and that's how we can see that C is correct. Now, some of those recommendations that I will have for you depending on where you are. To start off, we're gonna go over what's probably applicable to most of you. If you are watching this video and trying to cram and you haven't had as much time to properly prepare for the SAT as you would like, I'd really strongly recommend checking out our SAT crash course. It's designed to just cover the elements of the SAT where you can most easily and quickly improve your score. So it's a great resource to help you if you're down to the final few days or a week or a week and a half and you just wanna do a little bit of prep to quickly improve your score for the SAT. Now, some of you who have been watching this video have probably been doing a ton of prep over the last few months, and a lot of you may be struggling on those last handful of questions, especially on the second harder math module. If that's the case for you, I strongly recommend checking out our advanced math course. It's been working wonders for tons of students. It's helped students get perfect 1600s on the test. It's helped tons of students get 800s, 780s, 790s. It's really gonna prepare you for all those different varieties as you head into your SAT. Now, if any of you guys have any other questions, drop them in the comments below. But for all of you, I would recommend bare minimum checking out the free trial to our course. Once again, no credit card needed, but it's hopefully really gonna help you improve your score and feel more confident heading into test day.